Good morning. This is Mr. Dunson uh, here at Wilder Middle School. This is my course two uh, math seven mathematics class. And today we're going to be talking about theoretical experimental probability. But to start us off, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our do now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at uh, Friday's do now. All right, do now says Jamel went on a diving trip. He jumped off the deck of a boat into the water. Every second after he jumped into the water, Jamel descended for six meters. What was his location compared to the deck after 10 seconds? So go ahead and take a look at the problem and see what you come up with. I'm going to give you about one minute to do so. Let's see what you come up with. If you come up with a solution, go ahead and show me a model. How would you come up with that? Okay? If you come up with one way, show me a different way. What's this right here? You got 60. How did you get that? Hmm? Oh, 10 times 6. Excellent. What do you got going on? About another 30 seconds. Why'd you do 10 times 6? How'd you get 10 times 6? Okay, so descended so you know you're going down. Okay. Hmm. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to come back to that thought, okay? All right. So let's get ready to go over it, okay? So you know Mr. Dustin can't draw, so he'll do the best that he can with this. I'm going to draw a little picture of a boat. And then we're going to say a man that's jumping off of it, right? All right. And so... And they say he's descending. So what, what kind of motion do you think he's doing with the college hand? Where do you think he's going? Yes, come on. Yeah. He's going down. And it says he's going down. Ev well, how is he going down? At what rate? Yes, sir. Huh? Every second, how far is he going down? Huh? Six meters every second. And so then the question asks us at the end, what is that final question? What do we want to know? Yes. How much... Um he went down. How far did he go down after how much time? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. So let's take a look at this. All right, so if one second, if he went down, how far would he be down? If it was one second, yes. Six. Six. Okay, so then let's say if it was two seconds, how far would he be down? Yes. Twelve. And then how far would he be down if it was three seconds? Yes. Eighteen. Okay, so, so far we noticed that we're going up by how much each time with a college hand? Yes. Six. So if I want to go ahead and jump the gun and just do a mathematical operation, what would I do to figure out the final answer after 10 seconds? With a, yes, sir. So you could do 10 times six. So you do 10 times six, okay? So 10 times six, which will give me what with a college hand? Yes, 60. But 60 what though? He'll be 60, yes, Davion. 60 meters. So we'll go ahead and put 60 meters. But now, let's talk about something. So me and Kiana was having a conversation, and there's something that none of us noticed. So he started off on top of the boat, right? And it said he was descending. So how can I represent, I know he is a 60, uh, 60 meters from the boat, but how can I say he went down? Yes, Emmanuel. I can represent that with a negative 60. So technically he's moving a negative six units each time and he's a negative 60 because he's below the boat. All right. I'll give everybody a second to have that down. All right. So now ladies and gentlemen, if you will please find your number sets for this morning and we're gonna get ready to talk about it. All right, so this morning we're doing the how do you know, okay? So, how do you know? It says, how do you know that 50% of patients wait less than an hour? 
So once again, take a look at this. How do you know that 50% of patients wait less than an hour? Okay, so I know you guys have seen histograms before. Let's see what you guys come up with. And I'll give you 30 seconds just to take a look at it. 50% of the patients. It's interesting about how many patients there are total. Looking at our history, that'd be a good place to start. All right, so before we answer this question, can somebody tell me what's some important information that you might want to know before addressing the question? What is some important information? Start us off, Alex. That the time equals minutes. Huh? The time equals minutes. Okay, so if you recognize that the time at the bottom is in the units of minutes, okay? What else do you need to know? The total amount of people. How can I figure that out, what the total amount of people is? Yes, Kamaya? Okay, I can look at my sidebar. Yes, that tells me the number of people. But how do I figure out all together how many people there are, are together? Yes, Davion. I can add what up? Huh? I can add up all the people. So if I add up all the people, how many people fill within from 20 to 39 minutes? From 20 to 39 minutes. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Two. Two. How many people fell from 40 to 59? Yes, ma'am. Three. From 60 to 79, yes sir, four. And then from 80 to 99 minutes, they was waiting there a long time, yes. Yes ma'am, Kiara? One. One, all right. So now I know how much each individual group is, how do I know how much it is all together? How can I figure it out all together? Yes, I can add all those numbers up. So two plus three, which is, plus four is, Plus one is 10. Now, it's at 50%. What do we know about 50%? What do I know about 50%? Yes, Donovan. It's equal to a half. So what would be half of all the patients that was there? Yes, the key. Five. It'll be five. Five. And so how do I know that half of those people, which is the question, it says, how do you know that 50% of the patients waited less than an hour? Oh, there's one more piece I need to know. Where does that hour fall in at on this chart? Where does the hour fall in? Because it's talking about minutes and not necessarily hours. It's talking about minutes and not necessarily hours. Yes, Jason, give it to me. 60, 60 minutes, okay. So I know it's about right here with the 60 minutes. And how do I know it's half of those people waited less than that time? Yes, even AOL. Um, because it tells you um, at the bottom of the chart. Okay. Which numbers are less than Okay, which numbers are less than the hour? But how do I know it's 50% of the people, though? Yes. East side, that's five. Okay, because right here, everybody to the left of that is five, correct? Yes. Isn't five half of 10? Yes. yes. All right. So now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please, go to your packets and open it up. Um, what, what I have for you on top of your desk is um, um, the note sheets for today. We're going to talk about theoretical and experimental probability, okay? Now, for most of us, this is a, this is a review um, for what we have already talked about this year, theoretical uh, and experimental probability. Remember, we're trying to cover this again so we can uh, be better prepared for our SOLs. All right, so theoretical and experimental probability. All right, can someone tell me, some, what do you remember about theoretical and experimental probability? Yes. Okay, so what you think it is before the experiment happens, I love that. And there's something else that he said that was very important when it came to experimental probability. Does anybody else remember what is very important to remember about experimental probability? I see a couple hands. Yes, sir. Experimental is when it actually happens and you tested it. Okay, so experimental probability is when it actually happened and you actually did a test or a trial. So at the top of your note sheets, you might want to go ahead and be filling that in. Um, theoretical is before the experiment. It's before you conduct anything. And then experimental probability is what happens after the experiment has taken place. All right, just to add on to what Alvin said, this is what should happen. And experimental is what did happen.
Okay, so when it's, when it's coming to formulating um, the fractions for experimental and theoretical probability, there's two, uh, there's two formulas that I want you to remember, okay? And there's things I want you to keep in mind. And so some of the key words I want you to keep in mind is desired, favorable, and trials, okay? So I don't want you to write down just yet. So theoretical uh, probability. It's what you actually desire to happen over the total number of possibilities. It's so what you actually desire to happen over the total number of possibilities. And so remember, desire, did it actually happen just yet? No, no it's what you think will happen. Right. So it's the desired outcome over the, the possible, possible outcomes. outcomes. And it's written as a fraction. Okay, so we got the numerator of our fraction being the desired, and the denominator being the the possible, so desired all the possible outcomes options. over the possible outcomes, okay? Make sure you use that bar as a fraction bar. Okay. And so once again, I'm going to go back to what Albany said. Um, when it comes to experimental probability, it means you're actually doing an experiment. Okay? An experiment has taken place. So when it comes to formulate this uh, formula, what you're going to do is what actually happened, what happened over the number of trials. So how many trials did, you, did it take to make this thing happen? Okay? So what happened over the number of trials? All right, so as we're going through this, when you come up with your fractions, what I want you to remember is to always simplify your fractions. Make sure you always simplify your fractions. I know a lot of you guys go ahead and convert your fractions to a percentage, but make sure you always simplify your fractions because many of your answer choices will be in a simplified form, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the first example that was given. It says a coin is flipped and landed on tails seven times. What do you think this more sound like? Do you think this sounds like experimental probability or do you think this sounds like a theoretical probability? Yes, Kanaila. Why would you say it's experimental? Someone else tell me out. Why do you think experimental? Yes, Anthony. Okay, so because it said the number of trials and it said it landed on there seven times. Okay, so when you think about the experimental probability, how many times did you get your uh, the desire? How many times did it actually happen? How many times did you actually land on tails? Yes, Elijah. You landed on tails seven times. And Zorian, can you tell me, out of how many times did you actually do those trials? Um, out, of out of 10 times. All right, so now let's think, talk about theoretically. So theoretically speaking, when you have a coin that has, how many sides does a coin have on there? Two. two. It has two sides. Where are those two sides? Heads and what? Tails. Heads and tails, right? So let's talk about it. The desired outcome, how many times can you actually get tails? Yes. 50%. 50 or I love that you use percent. Or one out of two. two. One, so it's one of them is heads out of two. All right? Which is 50%. Excellent. All right? So now let's look at this spinner. All right? So there's a spinner that has eight sections. How many sections? Eight, and they're all of equal size, okay? They're labeled A through H, right? The arrow is spun 24 times and landed on B four times. Once again, what does that sound like? Experimental probability, why? 
because it was, it was what actually happened. It, something actually took place. An experiment was conducted. Excellent. So now, uh, what was the experimental probability of landing on? Is that eight? Yes, what was B? Excuse me, what was the experimental probability of landing on B? How many times did we actually land on B? Yes, Jason. Four. How many times did, this, did we conduct this experiment? Yes, Kanaila. 24. 24 times. Now, if you go back to that rule earlier, I say make sure you always do what? Simplify. simplify. Can we simplify this fraction? Yes. What number can go into both 4 and 24? Yes, Albany. Uh, eight. I mean, nine. Come on. Four, four. 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 So if we take four divided by four, we get? What do we get, ladies and gentlemen? One. One. And if we take 24 divided by four, we get what? Six. What, Jay? Six. Six. It's all right. All right. This is new to all of us. All right. So then it says the theoretical spirit, uh, probability of landing on B. So what, can, what do we need to know? What do we need to know about this circle to figure out the theoretical probability? Once again, I'm going to ask that question. What do we need to know about this spinner in order to know their theoretical probability? Alex. Um, how many sides does it have? How many sides or how many sections does it have? How many sections are on this spinner? Eight. Yes, Lori. There's eight sections on this spinner. All right. And then how many are actually labeled B? How many of those sections are actually labeled B? Yes, Kiana. One. So one out of eight would be our theoretical probability for this. Thank you for joining our class today. Hopefully you learned a little bit about theoretical experimental probability. Go on!